Wow, now this is one hell of an integral here. It's a really cool structure. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x divided by e to the x times e to the x minus 1. So let's just get started. We're going to call the integral i for reference purposes. And I'm going to perform a partial fraction decomposition for this 1 by e to the x times e to the x minus 1 term. So that's pretty easy to carry out, right? It will amount to having a 1 by e to the x minus 1 term here, minus the e to the x here, and you have 1s in the numerator. Okay, cool. So yeah, that makes sense, perfect sense. So using the linearity of the integration operator, you can now write this as the sum of a couple of integrals. One is the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x divided by e to the x minus 1 dx, and the other is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times the sine of x dx. And this integral here, I'm going to call i sub 1, and we're going to call this one i sub 2. And evaluating this integral i sub 1 is pretty easy, right? I mean, all you have to do is write this as the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the x times e to the i x, where I've invoked Euler's wonderful formula, which states that sine x is just the imaginary part of e to the i x. Okay, so multiplying out the two exponential functions gives me the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times 1 minus i dx. So on integration, I have the imaginary part of e to the negative x times 1 minus i divided by negative 1 minus i with the limits being 0 and infinity. And if you just expand the numerator here, which we can write as e to the negative x times e to the i x, well, in the limit as x approaches infinity, e to the negative x approaches 0. So that entire structure collapses to 0. And as x approaches 0, both these exponential terms approach 1s, right? So we have 1 times 1 in the denominator. And you have this negative sign because it's the result of the upper limit minus the result of the lower limit. And these negative signs cancel out pretty nicely. And so all you want now is the imaginary part of this reciprocal of 1 minus i. And whoa, that was the convert to text option where it converted uh, 1 by 1 minus i into i and is. So yeah, that's, yeah, the text to, uh, the convert to text option is pretty bad at mathematics. So anyway, we wanted the imaginary part of 1 by 1 minus i. Okay, nice. So if we can expand this argument here using the complex conjugate. So we have 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i squared. So uh, this amounts to 1 plus 1, which is 2 in the denominator. And this gives us a factor of just 1 by 2. So yeah, that was pretty straightforward. Okay, so the first of these integrals here evaluated out to 1 by 2, and it's this integral here, i sub 2, that's a lot more fun. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x by e to the x minus 1, and I'm going to expand using the term e to the negative x here. So multiplying upstairs and downstairs by e to the negative x gives me the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times sine x divided by 1 minus e to the negative x. And the reason for expanding using this e to the negative x term is that I now have a convergent geometric series structure as part of the integrand. What I'm talking about here is that if you have 1 by 1 minus x, where the absolute value of x is less than 1, then you can expand this as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k. And here, I have 1 by 1 minus e to the negative x. And on this interval, I can expand it as the sum over the non-negative integers k of e to the negative kx. So this is pretty cool. This implies that i sub 2 equals the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times sine x times the sum over k of e to the negative kx. And we're integrating with respect to x, of course. 
And because this e to the negative x times sine x term is independent of the index variable k, we can just slip it inside the summation operator. And finally, we have i sub 2 being equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of uh, e to the negative k plus 1 times x times sine x dx. And the golden question here is, can we switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators? Well, you have a bounded sine function here, and you have a damped exponential term. So there are no problems regarding convergence or boundedness. So yes, indeed, you can perform the switch up, and you can write i sub 2 now as the sum over the non-negative integers k of the integrals from 0 to infinity of e to the negative k plus 1 times x sine x dx. And you can evaluate this integral structure, again, using uh, by invoking Euler's wonderful formula, where you can write sine x as the imaginary part of e to the i x, or you could just look up a table of Laplace transforms and get exactly the same results. So what you'll get is 1 by k plus 1 squared plus 1. And we're, of course, summing this over the non-negative integers k. And if I perform a change of the index variable k as letting k plus 1 equal n, then this implies that i sub 2 can be written as the sum over the positive integers n of 1 by n squared plus 1. So recalling that your target integral i was, in fact, this i sub 2 structure, which evaluated out to this infinite series, minus the first more simple integral, which evaluated out to 1 by 2, we can now invoke the result of one of my favorite infinite series expansions. But before that, we're going to include an n equals 0 term here. So this infinite series can be written as the sum over the non-negative integers n of 1 by n squared plus 1 minus the 1 by n equals 0 squared plus 1 term as well, which is, of course, just a 1. And you have this minus 1 half as well. And this infinite series evaluates out to pi times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi plus 1 uh, divided by 2. Link in the description below for the proof. Minus 1 minus 1 half. So just separating the terms here in the numerator, we can write this as pi times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi divided by 2 plus 1 half. And these two cancel out quite nicely. And finally, you have this really cool result for a really cool integral that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x divided by e to the x times e to the x minus 1 dx equals pi times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi divided by 2 minus 1. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.